beginning in video number 27, uh, we begin our discussion with orthogonal matrices. Um, reminder, the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Um, in here, video number 30, we're going to continue that discussion um, concerning orthogonal matrices. What we established in the previous videos is that if we have some matrix that takes x and y and transforms it into x prime, y prime, as we noted beginning in video 27, that this can be viewed as generating another axis system, an x prime, y prime system. And orthogonal matrices do it in such a way that we're guaranteed that x prime and y prime will be perpendicular. And again, we've discussed this in detail in the previous videos. We also discussed some of the formal properties of orthogonal matrices. What we haven't done so far, even for a simple two-dimensional case, is discuss the um, components of an orthogonal matrix. So that's what we want to derive in this video. And imagine that we have a vector that starts here and ends here. So it will have points x and y, or on the primed axis system, it will have points x prime and y prime. And we want to find an expression for x prime and y prime in terms of x and y. In other words, we want to find the components of that orthogonal matrix. Now, let's look at this. If oh, here, from here to here, that's x prime, where this vertical line intersects x prime, we're calling this distance L. So x prime will be L plus this smaller distance right here. Before we figure out what that is, let's look at the diagram. If this is angle theta, and this is 90 degrees between x prime and y prime, this angle is going to be 90 minus theta. But if this is 90 minus theta, and the angle between x and y is 90 degrees, that has to be theta. So that this plus this comes out to equal 90 degrees. Now when we do our projection here under the y prime axis, that's a right angle. If this is theta, then that has to be 90 minus theta. And this angle must be 90 minus theta. Here's our projection onto the y-axis. This, of course, will be 90 degrees. So if this is 90 minus theta, this angle here is going to be theta. Now, one more step to go. The angle between these dashed lines is 90 degrees. So if this is theta, this is going to be 90 minus theta right here. Sorry, the angle between the dashed black lines is 90 degrees. So if this is theta, this is 90 minus theta. Now, in our last step, we consider the 90 degree angle between the red dashed lines. If this is 90 minus theta, then this angle here must be theta. So we took a long way around to show that if the x-axis is tilted by an angle theta, and the x prime and y prime are perpendicular, then this angle right here must be theta. Now, let's look at this triangle here. This is the x distance where our, the x value of the point, and going all the way up is the y value. This vertical line right here, um, the tangent of theta is the side opposite divided by the side adjacent. So this is x times the tangent of theta. The cosine of theta is the side adjacent x divided by the hypotenuse. So let's see if we can write an equation for x prime. 
Right now we just want to consider this part of x prime. So we have the cosine of theta equals x divided by L. Cosine of theta equals x divided by L. Or we would have then x equals, we could write it like this, x prime that will equal x divided by the cosine of theta. x divided by the cosine of theta, that's this distance l. So we have that part. Then we have to have plus this distance right here. So let's look at the smaller triangle right here. First of all, this is the hypotenuse, the dashed black line. This vertical distance is x times the tangent of theta. The total distance from here up to here, that's y. This point has coordinates x, y. So this is going to equal y minus x times the tangent of theta. And this distance here, that's going to be that hypotenuse times the sine of theta. So this distance is the hypotenuse, which we just said is y minus x times the tangent of theta. Better write it down. Y minus x times the tangent of theta that is this hypotenuse and this times the sine of theta is this distance right here which is what we want because this plus this together equals x prime so we have to multiply the hypotenuse by the sine of theta. So here then is an expression for x prime. Let's look at it. This will equal x over the cosine of theta plus y times the sine of theta minus, now here we have x times the tangent of theta, that's the sine divided by the cosine. So let's write it like that. We have sine squared divided by the cosine of theta. And here we have x divided by the cosine of theta. Here we have x divided by the cosine of theta. We can factor that out. Times 1 minus the sine squared of theta. So that's factoring this term out gives us this expression plus we have plus y times the sine of theta equals x prime. The 1 minus the sine squared of theta, that's the cosine squared of theta. That's what this is. So what we have is x prime equals x divided by the cosine of theta times the cosine squared of theta. That is x times the cosine of theta 
plus y times the sine of theta. So there's an expression for x prime in terms of x and y. Now can we get another nice simple equation for y prime in terms of x and y? So let's look at, let's consider that part of our problem. And also let's look at our diagram. And once again, let's look at the smaller triangle, this one here. Now the cosine of this angle, that is y prime divided by the hypotenuse of that smaller triangle. And we just established the hypotenuse is y minus x times the tangent of theta. So here the cosine of theta equals the side adjacent y prime divided by that hypotenuse y minus x times the tangent of theta. The side adjacent is y prime. The hypotenuse of this small triangle is y minus x times the tangent of theta. So there's what we have. Now let's multiply both sides by this. So we have y prime equals the cosine of theta times y minus x times the tangent of theta. So we have y prime equals y times the cosine of theta minus the cosine of theta times x times the tangent of theta. That's the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. These cancel, so y prime equals minus x times the sine of theta plus y times the cosine of theta. So there's our derivation for y prime in terms of x and y. So remember what we had on the, what we derived previously just a few moments ago. Um, let's erase this. Now a few moments ago we had derived that x prime. This is y prime. x prime, that was equal to x times the cosine of theta plus y times the sine of theta. So putting it in matrix form, we have x prime, y prime equals cosine of theta minus sine of theta times the sine of theta cosine of theta times xy. So this is our orthogonal matrix A. There are the components of it. So here, this tells us then that if we know x, y, how to derive x prime, y prime, um, can we go the other way around? If we know x prime, y prime, 
can we determine what X and Y are? And certainly we can do that, but probably this video is getting a little bit long. Um, let's go ahead and proceed with that, but we'll do it in the next video. What we want to point out for now is that where our discussion began in video number 27, the orthogonal matrix here that causes these axes to tilt by an angle theta, that orthogonal matrix, now we know its components, it's this. Okay, let's go ahead and then in the next video, um, here we know how to find x prime, y prime in terms of x, y. In the next video, let's consider the other problem. Um, if we know x prime, y prime, how do we determine what x and y are? Let's continue that in the next video.